In the following examples, we are asked to find the product, not the quotient in this case, only the product. So let's take a look at the first example. We have 6 squared over 7 times 35 over x cubed. Okay, before we actually have to multiply anything, let's see if we can't break this down uh, to some simpler terms, and then we'll multiply. So let's see here. I'm going to write out 6x squared, and I'm going to write it like this. 6 times x times x, and I will leave the 7 in the bottom. 35 I'm going to break up in terms of its uh, prime factors. I'm going to write 5 times 7. You'll see why I do this in a minute. And then the x cubed, I'm going to write it as x times x times x. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to see what I can eliminate, what I can cross out, what I can line out. Okay, right off the bat I see that I can get rid of an x here, an x here, an x here, and an x here. 6, 5, nothing to match up with, but the 7 does have something to match with. A 7 in the numerator, a 7 in the denominator. Very well. Okay, now that I've got all of this left, I think I'm ready to multiply. So let's see here. 6 times 5, that's all I have to multiply in the numerator. 6 times 5, of course, is 30. And then in the denominator, let's see here. Well, I lined out the 7. That leaves me with a factor of 1 there. So really, the only thing I have is 1 times x, which, which in this case is just x. So my answer for the first problem is just 30 over x. Pretty basic. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next example. All right. It's the same concept, but it's a little more complicated in that we have a little more to factor. So what we're going to do is factor this piece by piece. We're going to take a look at this one step at a time. Think about it. When you go and bite that hamburger, you don't swallow it whole. You take bites. You take small bites. So that's what we're going to do is take this into smaller pieces so that it's more manageable for us. So k squared plus 11k plus 18. Okay. I want the factors of 18 such that when added, give me 11. Well, I know that 2 times 9 is 18. And 2 plus 9 is 11. So those are going to be my factors there in that case. So I'm going to write out here, let's see. K plus 2 times K plus 9. All right. Then I have the next part. I'm done with that numerator. Let's look at the denominator k squared plus 14k plus 45. Okay. I want the factors of 45 such that when added give me 14. Well, that's pretty simple. I know that 9 times 5 is 45, and I know 9 plus 5 is 14. So those are my factors. k plus 5 times k plus 9. So again, I'm going to stress why we're doing this. We are breaking it apart so that, as in the previous example, we can see if we can eliminate something. Now you should start seeing that we can eliminate something, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Let's press on with the next part. Let's look at the numerator of the second part. k squared plus 5k. Well, I know for a fact this is not a trinomial, it is a binomial. And I also see that I have two k's involved here, so I can probably do some simple greatest common factor, or GCF factoring. So when I take a look at this, I'm going to say, okay, let's see, if I factor out a k, that should leave me with what? Well, k times what is k squared? Well, k times k, and k times what is 5k? Well, that's simply a 5. So there we go, there we have it, k times k plus 5, there in the numerator. Very good. 
Now let's take a look at the denominator. I have k squared minus 4k minus 12. All right, so I have this right here. I'm looking for the factors of negative 12 such that when added, give me negative 4. Okay, let's think about this. 12. I have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Which combination can somehow add or subtract to give me negative 4? Well, let me write this down for you. I have negative 12 again, so you can see it. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Which combination somehow can add or subtract to give me 4? Well, the only thing I see here is 2 and 6. Okay, but this is a negative 12. The only way to get a negative number when multiplying is if you had a positive times a negative or negative times a positive. Okay, if I were to say positive 2 and negative 6, what would I have? Well, I'd have negative 4 when I add that. And that's actually what we're looking for, but let's just verify. Had I had negative 2 and positive 6, I would have ended up with a positive 4. But I needed negative 4 because that's what this is right here. Very well. That means that my factors in the denominator are simply going to be k plus 2 times k minus 6. So let me write that down. k plus 2 times k minus 6. And there we have it. Now, we don't necessarily have to multiply in this case, but what we do have to do is see what we can eliminate. So I see a k plus 9 and a k plus 9 that I can line out or eliminate. I have a k plus 5 in the numerator, a k plus 5 in the denominator. I also have k plus 2 in the numerator and k plus 2 in the denominator. Okay, what am I left with? Well, all I'm left with is k over k minus 6. So let me rewrite. Okay k over k minus 6. All right. Now, again, you should not make the mistake of trying to line out the k's because what happens here is that we have k minus 6 in the bottom. Had it been 6k, we could have eliminated it. But because this is an operation of subtraction and really addition and subtraction, you cannot eliminate things like that. It needs to be multiplication in order for us to do this. So we have k over k minus 6 as our final answer there. So this is finding the product uh, when you are multiplying rational expressions.